Hey guys, welcome back to the Genus Brewing Channel. Today we're going to be doing something really fun. It's going to be the first in a two-part series. It's going to be kind of a challenge between me and Logan, and it's going to be all about speed brewing. So Logan and I are going to go head-to-head -head basically. I'm going to be brewing this week. Logan's going to give it a shot next week, and we're going to see how fast we can get a batch of beer done. Uh, in a couple weeks, we'll revisit it, do a taste test, and see if one of us actually made a palatable beer. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I have nothing going right now. Uh, no water in the kettle, haven't weighed out my grains, haven't done anything like that. I really don't even know what I'm going to do yet. Um, but as soon as the timer starts, everything's going to start rolling, so let's see what happens. Alright, here we go in three, two, one. There we go. And the timer started. Here we go. Get the hose water heated up as much as I can so it doesn't take as long to get heated up on the kettle. Let's get the meat. What's your target on the grain bill today, Peter? Um, just gonna do some crystal malt. I'm gonna go darker crystal malt. Um, hopefully I can get a lot of color without needing a ton of steeping time. And it's just, cause it's just gonna be in there for as long as it takes to heat up the water to the point where I can start stirring in malt extract. Crystal malt's also going to be good because even when it's still a little bit colder than normal steeping temperature, that crystal flavor will be coming out. Grain bag. As I get the crystal malts in there, I'm trying not to let the bag hit the bottom of the kettle. The kettle's still going at this point and the water's still heating up, and that bottom of that stainless is going to be really hot, so I don't want the nylon bag to actually burn inside there. The burner's going pretty hot, and so I know this is all going to heat up very quickly. I'm thinking I have maybe two or three minutes before this gets up to a temperature that I don't want my grains to still be in there. We get a little distracted and by the time I come back, the water is actually already boiling. This has only been about three minutes and I wanted to have hops in there but at this time so that I'm doubling up on the, on the bittering time that I could have. Um, but I come back, it's already boiling, I want to get things going and so I decide to scrap that idea and just get my malt extract stirred in. Immediately after that, I get hops in as soon as possible. Um, that way I can make as much advantage of, of my time as, as I can. But I'm thinking at this point, it's not going to be an IPA. Maybe I'm just going for a mild red ale. I get a couple ounces of hops whirlpooled in there, and, it, and I get everything else set up and ready to chill down my work. The hops are in there at this point for about four minutes maybe, so you're going to have a little bit of bitterness on that, but you're still probably looking relatively low on the IBUs. The nice thing is, with the method that I'm doing, you'll still get a lot of that hop flavor. And I used Pearl and Palisades, so you'll get a good combination of both English and German spiciness uh, and general herbal qualities. So I'm cool with what I have going on. I had my water pre-chilled, so adding these three gallons of water actually brought my whole temperature down to about 90 degrees. That's not ideal, but it's definitely low enough that I'm not going to be killing my yeast by getting it in there. And the challenge is to get everything in the batch in the shortest amount of time possible. So I add my yeast, close things up, and let it ride. After I get my yeast in there, I have everything sealed up, and I'm pretty sure I'm done with the brew day. All I have to do is wait and see if the fermentation kicks up. I finish off right around 23 and a half minutes, which I think is pretty good. Now all I have to do is wait and see how the beer turns out. So 
So this shop is functioning and during the recording of that video we ran into a little bit of a hiccup where some customers came in. I had to run up front but uh, now that I'm back here I'm all of a sudden seeing that the beer is finished and in a fermenter. Uh, that was quite the benchmark you said there. Yeah, I had to change strategy a little bit halfway through because of a because of the hiccups, but I think you're a little bit surprised to see that it was done when you came back, huh? <laughs> Definitely so. Um, yeah, 23 and a half minutes is approximately what I set. We'll see if Logan can can get close to that next time. I do have some tricks up my sleeve, so uh, I might just be able to beat that. All right, clearly the beer's gonna be worse, but we'll see if you can beat the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, challenge accepted. Speaking of challenges, we invite all you watching to uh, try your own fast brew day and see if you can beat our times or, or just make a great beer by trying it. Yeah, feel free to post your story on that below um, or bring in, bring in a sample to the shop. We'd love to taste what you guys end up coming up with. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Hit us up on Facebook if you have any questions or want to reach out to us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers, guys.